hello. Um, today I'm just trying out my Spark app. Um, that actually I actually bought from eBay. It cost me twenty pound. Um, I'm waiting for some new electrodes to be changed there and there. Uh, they're going to be uh, I can't remember. It's three point eight or four mil tungsten rod. Um, well basically, I'm just going to give it a quick try out. It won't be running with just one MOT. That's that's a big MOT. That is, it might not look that big because it is next to a pretty huge capacitor, another big capacitor there. Um, but that's actually about sort of like half the size again of a normal MOT. Um, basically, I'll be running the motor for the spark gap off of that bare react, and I shall be running the MOT from this variac that is already set at the right volts um, so I'm going to be running this system today and I shall be using it with that switch and the foot switch here which is actually the wrong way up at the moment oh god but I'm going to get down on the floor because I can't bend over and uh, we'll see how it goes now I was planning on trying it out at 250 watts so that one there is from nothing to 250 so if it doesn't work I'll gradually take it up um, and yeah I'll be using this switch here to turn it on so the system is now activated as you'll be able to see but that's annoying I know it's activated so I'm going to turn it off I've got my foot switch here um, so everything should all be well. Uh, I've just got to reset my stop button. That's a bit of a pain. That is. I've got the keys on the same, on the same thing as my stop button. Um, but it's sort of a safety feature in a way because you have to take the key physically out of that switch, which won't come out unless it's switched off to be able to unlock that. So it's sort of a good feature, really. So I shall start my spark gap off moving, as you can see. And that is on about 60 volts. Now that motor is 11,000 RPM. Um, you'll probably notice today that you'll hear the fans go off um, in the Unix. I've added the fans as you can see. I've added the lights as well. That made me jump. See, that's one of the main disadvantages with one of these things. You move and you either lean on it and stand on it. It scares the crap out of you. Um, yeah, you can see I've got these all going. You can hear it turning on the extra contactors, but we'll start with 250 watts anyway. So that MOT is balanced to 250 watts, so I shall switch it on with the pressure. Not much, but I will switch it on and I will turn the speed of the motor up. Right, that was uh, 250 watts, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it straight up to 1750 and give it a try on that. And again, take it down. And now we're going to go completely unballasted with one MOT and we'll see what happens. It might well not work too well because as I say, them electrodes are not very good at the moment. Um, so we'll just see what happens. But this is completely unballasted now. None of the lights are on, which means unballasted. So yeah, there's getting a bit of time lag in the video there. Um, it doesn't seem quite as fierce as, as when it's actually ballasted. That one's the main power. It doesn't actually seem quite as fierce as when it's actually ballasted, which makes sense. Um, I don't really understand it too much, um, but I've been talking with Andy, um, and he's been trying to explain the Ferranti effect to me. Now, basically, what I 
my understanding, which is very little, is that when you run a transformer that's designed to be ran at a certain amount of volts on a certain amount of amps, and you actually use a ballast, um, the transformer, when ballasted, will give out more power than if it wasn't ballasted. I don't really understand it because you would expect it to give out less power because you're using a ballast. Um, but as I said, there's not much actually about the Ferranti effect on the internet or anything. Um, so it's actually a, a pretty sort of like uh, a dull area really to find anything out on. But I mean, you could just hear that then um, go in on without a ballast and then the difference with a ballast I mean this is ballasted to 1750 watts and now I'm going to turn it down to get some more I don't really understand too much about the, uh, the Ferranti effect. I'm going to turn that off and to be safe, hit the stop button, turn the variac off. And yes, the next thing I will do, uh, this is obviously causing a lot of um, difficulty to my camera. It looks very shaky and also um, very juddery, like there's a time delay. So I'm presuming that sort of caused a bit of interference there, which is. Uh, Know, quite normal but the first thing I will be doing is shorting out my capacitor taking it all apart and I will be shorting it back out and leaving it shorted so I will be playing safe and I will be using my shorter chicken stick I shan't be using that bloody great long stupid thing I only use that to sort of try and show that you know sometimes it's not best to have huge great big long things uh, and as I say everything looks quite small in comparison because my capacitors are really big um, the transformer sitting on the bench is really big so it sort of it just made my small chicken stick look small but as I say it's not it's actually about two foot long um, so yeah well anyway thanks for watching I shall now tidy this away and be safe in the knowledge that I am safe and I will be now shorting that capacitor out to make sure as you can see, there was always a small safety gap there, just in case. Which again is a bit another bit of a grey area, actually, because a lot of people say, "Well, you shouldn't have a safety gap on your capacitor bank because it can blow your capacitor up." Well, that's, that's a pulse-rated capacitor. That's what it's designed for. It's a 50 kV capacitor. Um, so, I mean, that's not really going to take much harm from it. Um, but obviously, with an MMC or something else, you know they don't really like being shorts, shorted out, um, but um, I mean it's, that's just one of those things, it's a little bit like where do you finish the earth from the house um, and use the earth spike, you know, do you use the earth spike from the NST to the terry filter or do you use the earth spike just from the terry filter um, so as not to connect the actual main house earth to the neon sign transformer you know it's, it's really grey areas on all of it so but anyway thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I'll have a coil running with this on I say soon it won't be seen at all but I had to try it out you know uh, but hopefully I'll have a coil running with it at some point I've got a nice uh, big coil in the wardrobe that Ant made me for Christmas nice one bro and uh, I would like to have that running with this spark gap. So, as I say, this spark gap I, I bought from eBay, but I mean, it needs some work. Um, this is just sort of trial and error sort of kind of spark gap. And I know that people are going to comment saying, oh, you've got bits there that look really unsafe. Well, they're actually pegged. Um, it's as safe as it's going to get. It's a spark gap. <laughs> and it goes at 11,000 RPM, which is uh, bloody quick. 
Um, obviously, yeah, I know before everyone starts telling me, I don't need it to be going 11,000 RPM. I don't need to be taking it anywhere past about 60 volts. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just trying it out and having a bit of fun. So, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I shall speak to you again soon.